Dear students, welcome to UGC EPG Patashala on Human Rights and Duties. My name is Professor Vyasar Murthy. I am the Executive Director of the Center for Human Rights Studies, OP Jindal Global University. In this unit on national mechanisms for protection and enforcement of human rights, we will take up today the module on National Commission for Women. In fact, this module as well as the next module will focus on various facets of the National Commission for Women. We have earlier on examined the national human rights protection system and also the role of the executive, legislature, judiciary and the National Human Rights Commission in the task of protection and promotion of human rights. In fact, uh, we also saw the Paris principles on which the national human rights institution should be founded and the significance of these Paris principles. We also reviewed the Protection of Human Rights Act under which the National Human Rights Commission and the State Human Rights Commissions and the Human Rights Courts have been established as well as we have reviewed at uh, some considerable length the activities of the National Human Rights Commission and also uh, took a critical evaluation of the performance of the National Human Rights Commission. In this module, we take up the National Commission for Women. It is often said that women hold half the sky and if you look at the population, they nearly represent 50 percent of the population. But when we ask ourselves, what is the real situation of women? The, not only in India, but across the world, in different countries, in different societies, women do not have uh, an equal status. And, and if you look at uh, 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 their representation at various uh, 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 positions, at, at various uh, uh, sectors, uh, one finds that there is a huge gap and in this context there is a need for mechanisms for protection of women. In fact, in the 90s there was a slogan coined women's rights as human rights as if there was a doubt. In fact, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights says that all human beings are born free and they are equal in dignity and rights. And after the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, one finds that many international conventions and covenants have been adopted. In each of them, non-discrimination is a major or a central tenet. Uh, in other words, in the conventions, there are certain rights which are mentioned and those rights are to be enjoyed by men and women on an equal basis. So today, we will look at the National Commission for Women in this backdrop and in this context and what were the uh, historical uh, reasons which triggered the establishment of this commission and also its stru role, structure, powers, etc. At the end of this module, you will know the background to the creation of the National Commission. Women in India, this in other words known as NCW, in addition to the mandate of the NCW, composition, functions, powers and activities. And the students will also be able to assess the need for a separate autonomous body dealing with women's rights in India. Students must also be in a position to appreciate the nature of the National Commission for Women as an autonomous independent body. First, let us look at the challenges faced by women. They have a poor economic, social and political status over past many centuries. Patriarchy, sun buyers, inferior role in society have all contributed to the status. Discrimination is seen from womb to tomb. 
uh, it has manifested in female infanticide, feticide, impediments in women's access to education, health, adequate nutrition, and all of them are important human rights. And it has also manifested in domestic violence, sexual violence, violation of reproductive rights, and lack of adequate representation in decision making bodies. What does our constitution say about men and women? And article 14 of the constitution talks about equality before law and equal protection of laws to all persons, whether they are men or women. And under article 15, the state can make special provisions for the advancement of any socially, educationally backward classes of citizens, scheduled castes, scheduled tribes. In fact, in 1971, government constituted a committee on the status of women in India. After three years, it has submitted a report in the year 1974, which really came out with number of findings. In fact, this report said that the backward status of women in the terms of their socio-economic status and the report also concluded that women need special measures by state for overall advancement and there was a uh, recommendation to set up the National Commission for Women and state commissions to monitor the development of women and facilitate redressal of their grievances and these bodies should have certain recommendatory and mandatory powers and the statutory autonomous status should be there in case if they have to be effective and they should be independent from the government and the commission on the status of women also said they should these bodies should effectively monitor government measures and their impact on women's rights the national commission for women was constituted as a statutory body under the national commission for women act 1990 which came into force on 31st january 1992 under the national commission for women act the commission will one review the constitutional and legal safeguards for women two recommend remedial and legislative measures, three, facilitate redressal of grievances, four, advise the government on all policy matters affecting women. What is the composition of NCW provided under in its founding statutes? Uh, the commission shall consist of a chairperson, five members and a member secretary who are nominated by the central government and the chairperson of NCW must be a person committed to the cause of women. And the founding statute that is the National Commission for Women Act also says that members must be amongst persons of ability, integrity and standing who have had experience in relevant fields and the member secretary shall be either be an expert in the field of management, organizational structure or sociological movement with experience nominated by the central government. What are the functions of the National Commission for Women? These have been outlined in the section 10 of the National Commission for Women Act. It, it includes investigation and examination of issues in relation to the safeguards provided for women under the constitution and other laws and to make recommendations. B. Review the existing provisions of the constitution and other legislation affecting women recommend amendments. C. Violation of the provisions of the constitution and other laws relating to women with the appropriate uh, authorities. Acts on the basis of complaints or suo moto in issues concerning deprivation of women. D. Inspecting custodial institutions such as jails, remand homes, women's institutions where women are kept as prisoners or otherwise. 
suggest remedial actions. E. Conduct special studies and investigations into specific problems or situations arising out of discrimination and atrocities against women. Identify the constraint so as to recommend strategies for their removal. Promotional and educational research and the NCW Act also requires due representation of women in all spheres. Participate and advise on the planning process of socio-economic development of women. Also evaluate the progress of the development of women and fund litigations involving issues affecting a large body of women. So, if one looks at section 10, there is a range of functions which have been entrusted to the National Commission for Women. If you want to sum up, the commission role is a kind of an advisory, reporting, investigating, evaluative, remedial, educational and supervisory duties. Uh, it is also regarded as a autonomous voice for women, a championing the cause of women and it can also be described as the ombudsman institution for the rights of women in India. What is the structure of NCW which is provided? Uh, it comprises of six different cells. There is a complaints and investigation cell and then there is a research and study cell and then there is a legal cell, NRI cell and public relations cell and northeast cell to perform uh, certain functions. Uh, uh, each of these cells have their own areas of operation and uh, demarcation. To handle individual complaints under Article 10.4 of the National Commission for Women Act, the NCW has all the powers of a civil court trying a suit while investigating matters in relation to complaints. NCW acts upon a wide range of crimes against women in this quasi-judicial function. What type of complaints cannot be entertained by National Commission for Women? There are a number of them. They include illegible or vague, anonymous or pseudonymous complaints like civil disputes, contractual rights obligations and the like, service matters not involving any deprivation of women's rights, labor industrial disputes not involving any deprivation of women's rights which are to be handled by labor courts. When the matter is sub judice before a court tribunal, any matter which is pending before a state commission or another commission uh, duly constituted under any law for the time being in force, property dispute. So, these are the kind of complaints which cannot be entertained by National Commission for Women. The National Human Rights Commission likewise cannot go into some of these matters. NCW does not have any judicial representation. In the year ending on 8th January 2015, the complaints and investigations cell received 28,637 complaints out of which the largest number that is 5,741 complaints was regarding the police apathy against women followed by complaints alleging domestic violence which number about nearly 4,000. What does NCW do regarding promotional and educational research on gender equality and women's empowerment? It has established an expert committee on social, economic and political empowerment of women in northeast states to deal with issues of the northeastern region. It has also established another expert committee on discrimination faced by Dalit women and suggest action plan to deal with issues. As you know, Dalit women face double discrimination 
one an account of their being gender status and the other an account of being Dalits. Some of the activities of the legal cell in the year 2014-15 are given below like for instance uh, uh, they have suggested amendments uh, to the National Commission for Women Act so as to make it more effective. It has also suggested harmonization of the Dowry Prohibition Act 1961 with the protection of women from Domestic Violence Act and an expert committee constituted by the commission drafted a central legislation title the prevention and protection of women from publicly dehumanization and stigmatization atrocities bill 2014. The commission conducted legal outreach programs uh, on a national level to highlight the issues concerning women and particularly from the backward areas, rural areas and the legal remedies available to them. The NCW has also been conducting Parivaric Mahila Lok Adalats. In fact, these Adalats are organized in collaboration with non-governmental organizations, state commissions, state legal service authorities for speedy redressal and disposal of matters relating to family affairs and marriage which are pending before courts. And uh, these uh, adalas have been quite successful and here the redressal is through conciliation mechanism outside the formal judicial setup. In conclusion, we see that the National Commission for Women Act 1990 has entrusted the NCW with a range of functions. And in fact, this commission was set up following a report of the Commission on the Status of Women in India 1974 and uh, this report recommended the establishment of NCW to protect women's rights and uh, the NCW Act came into force in the year 1992 and the National Commission for Women consists of a chairperson, five members and a member secretary and it is interested with a number of functions which are quite detailed and they include among others individual complaints redressal, law and policy reform, research and other promotional activity. It has an advisory, it has a reporting, investigating, evaluative, remedial, educational and supervisory duties in relation to women's rights in India. While trying individual complaints, it has the powers of a civil court. In fact, we will see in the coming module how did a National Commission for Women acquit itself over the years, what have been its achievements, what have been its lacunae. Thank you. Thank you.